A useful concept in quantum mechanics is the concept of basis sets. Basis sets. So what do I mean by basis sets? Well, it's a collection of things, and we'll define what those things are in just a minute, that you can represent other things uh, based upon that basis set. All right, let's take as an example the univectors i and j uh, from um, the two-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system. So let's draw here. This will be x, or let's make that y, that's generally y. This will be x, and this will be y. And I don't know if you study this in high school, but you can represent this two-dimensional coordinate system as a vector i, or sorry, j, pointing along the y direction, and a vector i pointing along the, um, the x direction. And we'll put little hats on there to make them vectors. All right. So what are the properties of these vectors i and j? Well, the length of vector i is equal to 1, and the length of vector j is equal to 1, and i and j are perpendicular. Yeah, that looks kind of funny there. Let me just rewrite that as a j with a little hat above it. All right, so these are called unit vectors. And the idea here is that you could represent any vector in this two-dimensional plane as a linear combination of the unit vectors in the i and j direction. So let's make this a um, vector r pointing up that way. And we could say r is a combination of, let's call this 1.5 i plus, and let's call this 2, uh, actually we're making that little hats above those things, so let's put a little hat above there, plus 2 times j. So this vector r, you go 1 half times this way, and then you point up here 2 times that way, and there it is. So i and j form a basis set. You can represent any vector in the two-dimensional plane here as a linear combination of these basis set vectors i and j. I and J form an ortho a normal set. Ortho normal set. And it's a complete ortho normal set. Any vector can be represented as a linear combination of these two vectors. So ortho, what does that mean? Ortho means orthogonal. And what does normal mean? Normal means the um, length uh, is equal to 1. Now what we said in quantum mechanics was if you have something orthogonal you integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity of um, one vector or one eigenfunction times another eigenfunction that is equal to 0. And if you integrate from minus infinity to infinity of the same eigenfunction that's equal to 1. So this would be an orthonormal set if you have all the vectors or all these quantities. Now this is called an inner product in uh, these, this kind of system. The inner product is called the dot product when you talk about these vectors. So let's show that these i and j vectors are an orthonormal set. Okay, So i dotted into i, okay, and we're going to look at the length of this. So this is equivalent to taking the wave function squared and integrating over all space. Well, the dot product is the, I'm sorry, you shouldn't really have these here. So the dot product is uh, the length of i times the length of i times the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. The angle between i and i is 0 degrees. The length of i is 1. The length of i is 1. That's called the unit vectors. So in fact this is equal to 1. So i is normalized. You do the same thing with j. That's also normalized. So yes, these are normalized. Let's see if they're orthogonal. So let's take the two different vectors, i and j, and let's dot make the dot product of them. That's equivalent to taking two different vector or two different 
wave functions and multiplying them together and integrating over all space. All right, so that's the length of I times the length of J times the cosine of the angle between the two. So here's I and J, the cosine of that is 90 and the, uh, sorry, the angle is 90 and the cosine of that is zero. So indeed that's zero. So yeah, I and J form an orthonormal basis set. I forgot the basis in there. Basis set because they're, orth they're orthogonal and they're normalized. Now the neat thing about that is just this, that any vector in this space can be considered as a linear combination of these orthonormal basis sets. Okay, so I think we have, I hope we have some idea of what a basis set is and what an orthonormal basis set is based upon analogies in the xy plane and these unit vectors. Now let's shift to uh, quantum mechanics. The complete set of eigenfunctions can be thought of as an orthonormal basis set for representing states in a quantum mechanical system. All right, so remember uh, we had eigenfunctions and eigenvalues and so on. So now let's say these i, where different states are represented by different values of i, are an orthonormal basis set. Okay, so these are uh, eigenfunctions. Remember we have an eigenvalue equation and the functions that give you those that eigenvalue equation are called eigenfunctions. All right, so analogous to, let's say we just have two of them. So let me draw a, so suppose that we just have i equal one or i equal two and that's a complete set. So here is, um, we're now gonna make these into vectors, psi two. Let's make that the uh, second eigenfunction. And here, psi one. The length of these is one because they're orth uh, normalized and they're orthogonal because they're 90 degrees apart. So any uh, state of a quantum mechanical system can be represented as a linear combination of these basis set functions. So this would be the state of a system. And these are eigenfunctions of the system. So a state of a system, all right, there it is. That's a linear combination of this wave function plus this wave function. So psi can be represented as a vector that should be a straight line, <laughs> could be represented the vector in this orthonormal basis set. All right, so that's a key concept that will become in useful uh, later on as we get into quantum mechanics. Okay, so that's it. The quantum mechanical states are linear combinations of eigenfunctions. And if these eigenfunctions are orthonormal, hey, that's kind of cool because now we can just represent uh, that as that. Okay, cool.